Yesterday was Halloween. Jehovah's Witnesses do not celebrate Halloween. Bruce Clark suggests that Jehovah's Witnesses don't observe Halloween because they don't like strangers going up to their door and annoying them. A man went to heaven and St. Peter was there waiting for him at the pearly gates. As they were walking down the hall to heaven, St. Peter pointed to a closed door and said, you need to be very quiet as we walk past that door. They proceeded to tiptoe past the door and into heaven. Once the man was settled into heaven, he asked St. Peter why they had to be so quiet as they passed by that door. And St. Peter said, there are 144,000 Jehovah's Witnesses in there, and they think they're the only ones here. John, the writer of Revelation, received a vision of the future. And part of that vision was a tour of heaven. After this, I looked, and there was a great crowd that no one could number. They were from every nation, tribe, people, and language. They were standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They wore white robes and held palm branches in their hands. John was writing to Christians who had suffered persecution. They had seen family and friends martyred for their faith. Many of these martyrs that John described had suffered terribly before they died. Some died in the arena, being torn apart by wild animals. Others were burned alive. And some were crucified, mocking the way their Savior had died. John wrote the book of Revelation to encourage Christians in difficult times. In the vision, one of the elders explained to John that these martyrs of the church had suffered and died, but that they were being taken care of and comforted by the Lord in heaven. It is hard to believe that in our day and time, Christians are still being martyred in other parts of the world. Just this past week, there were three people killed who were worshiping in a church in Nice, France. Estimates differ but all agree that between 4,000 and 10,000 people around the globe were killed just last year because they were Christians. In some places, it is still dangerous to attend church or to identify yourself as a believer in Jesus and a follower of Christ. The elder in John's vision tells him that God will lead these martyrs to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. But is it only martyrs who have received comfort in heaven? Of course not. One of the struggles that many of us go through is to watch a loved one suffer. My mother was in pain for the last two years of her life. When her pain became excruciating, she was taken to the hospital. She was diagnosed with terminal cancer. In the hospital, they limited the amount of painkiller they could give her. She continued to be in terrible pain. Some of you know what that's like to watch someone you love be in that kind of pain. I stayed with mom 24 seven those last 10 days. My mother was a very spiritual person. She knew she was terminal and she was ready to die. One afternoon when she was racked by pain, she asked me, why does it have to be this way? It was a good question. I did not have an answer. I still don't have an answer to, the, to that question why some people have to suffer so much. My father and I were both there each day. We did not want to lose her, but we both agreed that our prayer was that she would die. Is that wrong to pray? I don't think so. She was not going to get better and she was suffering. And we both believed that she would be at peace and comfort in the arms of her Heavenly Father. After she was transferred to hospice, they gave her substantially higher doses of pain medication, which helped tremendously and made her sleep a great deal. I am grateful for palliative care. Some of you have prayed for your loved one's suffering to end. Praying that someone will die can be a compassionate prayer. 
The comfort from this passage is that these martyrs who suffered so much were comforted when they passed into heaven. The lamb cares for them. God wipes away every tear from their eyes. God's comfort is not only for martyrs, but also for everyday Christians who suffer and die. Toward the end of the book of Revelation, John reports seeing a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more, mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. God will comfort all people by wiping the tears from their eyes, tears from physical pain, tears from heartache, all kinds of tears. There will be no more tears in heaven. There will be no more pain. People won't grieve anymore. God's comforting presence fills that holy place. So on this All Saints Sunday, we remember those that we have loved and lost. We give thanks for their lives. We honor those whose lives exemplified the way Christians should live. We remember the good that they did. And when one of us suffers the loss of someone we love, the rest of us reach out to them to comfort them. As a pastor for four decades, I've met with hundreds of families as they grieved. And I often hear them say things like, at least he's not suffering anymore, or I'm happy for her. Now she's no longer in pain. There is comfort for many of us knowing that our loved ones are no longer suffering. And no matter what we have to endure here, we live in the hope that one day we will be with them again in the presence of our loving and caring God. Thanks be to God. Amen.